could have been any uh, uh, infection. Last week, uh, I asked the BOP to start doing some assessment work to see uh, if it was possible to expand home confinement, particularly for those older uh, prisoners who had served substantial parts of their sentence and did no longer pose a threat and may have underlying conditions that make them particularly vulnerable. Uh, and uh, they've been doing that work. Uh, 10, 000, we have 10,000 inmate, uh, inmates over, over 60. Uh, a pro generally speaking, about a third of our inmates uh, have, have pre-existing conditions. 40% um, of those serving uh, sentences, 40% uh, of that 10,000 are serving sentences for violent crime or sex offenses. Um, we have authorities under the First Step Act and under other general authorities uh, to uh, release, it would permit us to release to home confinement in certain designated circumstances. And uh, I've asked uh, and issued uh, a memorandum just today to Bureau of Prisons uh, to increase the use of home confinement uh, based on a number of factors, including some of the statutory uh, factors that we have to consider and are appropriate to consider, uh, and uh, other eligibility uh, uh, standards. I mean, one of the things we have to assess is whether that individual, this is a case by case, will be more safe in the particular circumstance in which they're gonna find themselves. Um, and uh, in, in many cases, uh, that may not be the case. Uh, we also have to provide that anyone who is released to home confinement is quarantined before they go out for 14 days to ensure that we're not putting people out in the community who have it. But we are now in the process of trying to expand home confinement uh, as part of you know, trying to control uh, the spread of this infection. I would say generally the history, my, my sense is that 